Internet marketers, meet Bing. Bing, meet Internet marketers. Right, with the introductions out of the way, let's get you two acquainted. Point number one, Bing likes to take things literally. Bing is a bit like that slightly slow friend that you had in school who didn't really understand jokes. Or, to put it another way, as in AI, Bing is probably somewhere on the spectrum. Yes, taking things too literally is one of the most common criticisms levelled at Bing and that's because it has a tendency to simply look for exact matches in the content. If you search for, I like to eat steak, then Bing will look for websites that have that phrase or something similar in the text. On the other hand, Google just looks for content about steak and about people who like to eat steak. In this way, Google shows a little more understanding and has more ability to read between the lines. Not that this is always a good thing, mind. Sometimes Google's second guessing can actually be a bit irritating and can lead to results that aren't directly related to what you're looking for. If you ask a question, for instance, then Bing will be more likely to bring up a page where someone else has asked the same question, and this can be very useful. But what it means for you is that it's still worth using some keywords. Whereas Google is much more about latent semantic indexing and writing around the subject, perhaps using some long tail keywords, you know, Bing will still reward you for including the very basic keywords that you're trying to rank for. So try and do a little of both. You'll want to use a slightly lower link density than you used to if you want to avoid being penalized for spamming by Google, but you should still include some keywords there for Bing. Point number two, user engagement matters. Something that Google and Bing can agree on is that user engagement matters. Except Bing is even more explicit about this, if anything, and has even coined a phrase to describe the activity they want to avoid. Pogo sticking. There will be none of this, thank you very much. Pogo sticking is when a website visitor jumps from one result, clicks back, and then clicks on another. This is what they want to avoid. So if you want Bing to love you, you need to prevent your visitors from wanting to click back. This means you need to grab attention early on, and it means that you need to think about your page speed, your design, etc. Point number three, so do click-through rates. Another similar factor that Bing also takes seriously is CTR, the click-through rate. In other words, how many people click on your link? So if they keep showing your website in their SERPs but no one ever clicks on it, this suggests your site doesn't look very interesting. All it's doing is cluttering up the page and taking up space that another site could make better use of. This is quite a clever way for Bing to check that the results coming up are relevant or that they seem relevant in the eyes of visitors. This is interesting because it's not something that Google talks a lot about and improving your CTR is going to involve a rather different process compared with the SEO practices you're probably used to. What improves CTR? Well, many things, but of course the title and the meta description are going to be right up there. Think about what will be interesting for someone who is searching for the key phrase that you're trying to rank for. Make sure there is a direct connection here and have all the signals pointing to the same topic and learn how to write engaging titles and descriptions. Point number four, social signals are big on Bing. There's some debate still as to the role of social signals on Google even now. We know for a fact that getting plus ones on Google Plus will improve your Google ranking, but whether the same is true for Facebook likes is less certain. And if Facebook was central to Google's strategy, then you might ask why BuzzFeed isn't the number one result for every search. But Bing has gone on record as saying that social signals do matter to them, and this means that you should definitely include social media marketing as part of your marketing strategy. Point number five, crawl depth. Going back to your site content and keywords for a moment, it's also interesting to consider the difference in crawl depth for Google versus Bing. Reportedly, Bing only crawls around the first 100 kilobytes of a web page, unlike Google, which will read your whole site. 
This means you should aim to include your keywords more heavily in the first portion of your content compared with the rest. And this actually makes a lot of sense for Google too, but for different reasons. Google actually looks at certain key points within your content as being more important indicators than others. The first paragraph is one section that's given extra importance, as is the last paragraph and other headings. And by increasing the keyword density in your first paragraph, you can send the right signals to Bing without getting too spammy with keywords for Google. You know, everyone wins. This also introduces some other interesting points too. For instance, a lot of people will rely on sitemaps in order to help search engines index their site. This is one page that links every other page on the domain, and it means that once the map is indexed, Google knows where to find all future content you add. But this won't work for Bing if it's only reading the top segment of the page. If you want your sitemap to work for Bing, you need to ensure that you put pages you most want to be found right at the top. And if you're adding new content, you want to make sure that new content goes at the top of any list rather than at the bottom. Point number six, respect your elder content. Bing believes in golden oldies. In other words, it believes that an older domain is more likely to be authoritative than a newer domain. So if you have a page that's been around for a long time, you'll find it gradually climbs up the rankings. This is one thing that's personally always put me off about Bing. Most of the research I do requires up-to-date and current answers. And that means I can't make do with posts from 2012. When I search on Bing, I'm often left wondering if anything I'm reading is relevant anymore. This is a personal preference though. As far as SEO goes, it's actually a good thing. Why? Because it means that Google is going to like fresh content and Bing will give it some love as it starts to fade. But do bear in mind that both Bing and Google prefer older domains. Of course, there are way more differences than we have time to go into in detail, so let's look at some rapid-fire differences to finish off. Bing likes keyword domains more. Google prefers brand name domains. Bing takes site authority very seriously. It likes editorial content, older domains, and established organizations. PageRank is less relevant for Google these days, and it's never been relevant for Bing. Bing likes content closely linked to a site's homepage, and it likes breadcrumbs. Another thing to take some time to learn is about Bing's spam filter, and this is how Bing decides whether or not to penalize sites that show up in its SERPs. So you need to make sure that you observe the rules that Bing recommends. This means being careful about your outbound links, you know, only link to clean sites, don't trade links, and use Bing's webmaster tools to find out if your site's been blocked. That's right. Bing has a webmaster tools just like Google does, and it's just as useful stroke invaluable for marketers. And you can find this at bing.com forward slash toolbox forward slash webmaster. As the Alan Parsons project sang, where do we go from here? Now you have lots of information about why Bing SEO matters, how it works, and how different it is from Google but you also know that you need to keep focusing on Google. So what's the best way to proceed? Well, exactly as we said earlier. For the most part, you're not going to do anything that differently, but you may want to consider including a few more keywords in your opening paragraphs. Maybe show a little more love to your legacy content and perhaps reorganize your sitemap. Oh, and definitely think about your titles, your meta descriptions, and how these factors will impact on your CTR. And in doing all that, you'll be throwing Bing the occasional bone that will help you to succeed a little bit more on the second biggest search engine in the world. And this will help you start tapping into that 30% market share a bit more and hopefully improving your number of visitors. And if the Google apocalypse ever does come, at least you'll have a backup site that will still be bringing you fresh visitors and helping you to run your business. And then everyone else will find themselves wishing they paid just a little bit more attention to old number two. Oh, and one last thing. Why not go and take a look at your current rankings on Bing right now? 
If you haven't looked before, then it might surprise you just how similar or different the results are. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.